It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by The Beat Seat. What is going on, people? Welcome to the morning show, day 1,919 in a row. We're here. We're in the process. I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you're ready for an action-packed comedy news show. We have a bit of an update. I don't know if this is accurate yet. We're going to talk about it. We're going to look and see what news stories there are. But apparently Ashton Kutcher may be next on the chopping block. You know, um, this story about P. Diddy is just getting a little out of control. I mean, obviously we knew he's, he's in it and there's something going on. I mean, for the, for the federal uh, government to come after you, there's something massive there. But now it's starting to unravel all the other stars that may be involved with this. And there's a guy named Isaac Cappy years ago who came out with this basically like tell-all and everybody basically thought he was nuts, or not really. I mean, everybody who saw it was like, whoa. And multiple times in that speech, he said, look, I'll never, ever end things for myself. I'm telling you guys what's going on. I want you to know they're going to get rid of me. They got rid of him. And now, if you go back and watch that clip, it's from like five years ago. Everything the guy said came true. And all these people that he was talking about, it looks like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They were able to give, give themselves a bit of a re reprieve by getting rid of people and to uh, slow down the process. But now I think that karma is finally kicking in and these people are all starting to be uh, taken to task. Now, I'm not sure about this. Um, we're going we're gonna to get into it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see if we can find any information on this. So if you guys are joining me, if you're here for the first time, welcome. This is the Mark Inspire Show. I've been here 1,919 days in a row. And I try to talk about anything that's non-political and see if we can just get into some comedic side of it. Like there's an angle for comedy in every story the way I see it. Now you may not like my comedy, you may not think I'm funny, but when I think I'm funny, I'm just doing something, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to a story and saying something that I think is funny. Uh, so try to get into that side of it when you're watching my show and it will uh, help you get through the stories and actually maybe have some belly laughs along with me and the others here that do get my comedy. Uh, so anyway, let's get into the news. I'm going to pop it up on the screen. If you are on Clapper, my friend over here, let me see who's here. Kind Dev, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope if you have a chance to, you can join me on TikTok, X, or Rumble. This is where the show is best. You can see the green screen. Tombstone, my friend, good to see you. Uh, so every day since December 31st, 2018, I've been here. And we connect and try to get away from this negative world for a little while. It's a positivity platform in the sense that I don't really think about anything else outside of this room and I create in this moment. A lot of songs, this song, every song that you hear was actually created live here on this program. Live looping, I'm gonna share something I wrote last night for April Fool's Day called Don't Be an April Fool. Oh man, what a beauty. And the point of the show is let's break away from this world for a few minutes together every day in the morning and at night. I go on at 9 a.m. and then again at 10 p.m. at night. And there's live music at 432 hertz on a drum that you've never seen before. I patented and invented this drum. It's a, the only drum you could play with your entire body while sitting completely upright. We have a guy named Matt Zabrowski. He's our woohoo guy. He hits us with a woohoo every day. Zabrowski, can we get it? I mean, I tell you, it's a positive in these show. And then you got Matt Zabrowski there hitting you with a woo-hoo. You're like, I, I get it. I get it. So the beat seat, it's the only drum in the world you can play with your hands and feet at the same time. It sounds like a full drum kit. And you can play your guitar and kick it while you play your guitar. And it's designed so you don't have to sit with your legs wide like a cajon makes you sit. It makes you, you sit like you're playing guitar. It's the perfect seat for guitarists. That's why it's called the Beat Seat. It's also an extremely powerful sensory therapy drum. So if you know anybody with autism, if you know anybody with a Down syndrome or anything else in the, in the spectrum, let them know about the Beat Seat. It has unlimited tones. 
So if you're a per percussionist, if you're a musician, you can create like a 12-piece drum kit on this box. It's just a box, but it has two snares and four playable panels. It's the only drum on earth like it. You can check it out at beatseat.rocks. And the best part about it, if you order one, I will be building it for you. They're not done at a factory. I hand build them. I'm the inventor, and I build them for you. I ship them out from Fairfield, Connecticut, and they're made from the wood I cut from a log in my backyard. Yeah, this is a piece of it right here. I cut this last year. I, I've got a uh, Alaskan chainsaw mill, and it's got a 36-inch blade. And you see, if you go to my YouTube channel, Mark Has Wood, you see some of these videos where I'm literally cutting planks of wood. So I could then dry it downstairs in the garage and then build you a beat seat with this wood eventually. So just a little side note. You can check it out at beatseat.rocks. But welcome to the most electric show on planet Earth because here we live in the moment. Let's see what's going on in the news and definitely get into this whole Ashton Kutcher potential connection to D, uh, P. Diddy. Now, they were very close friends. This I did not know. I don't really watch the news. I don't pay attention to any of the celebrity hubbub. I think it's a bunch of horse crap. But when you see that all of these revelations that were put out there years ago by Senior Cappy are starting to fully come to fruition, you have to start questioning everything, my friends. Look at it from all angles. I've had a few people, because I, I got booted again from the uh, creator program on, on TikTok. For what? For being original and them saying that's not original. And so I, of course, uh, you know, I appeal. And I say, this is the piece. If I'm doing Christopher Walken impression. So I'm doing the Christopher Walken impression. I'm improvising a whole comedy bit off of a news story about P. Diddy as Christopher Walken. And they go, Bip, that's unoriginal. So I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand this. First of all, I haven't done anything over a minute because I don't want to be considered unoriginal for your crap pol policies. So all my 15-minute news stories, I'm dropping 59-second pieces of over and over to try to get the whole thing out because they're going to kick me from the program. So I put this thing at 59 seconds and change. All of them were. But they said, nope, it's over a minute. They call part of the program and they go, that's not original. You're out of our program. It's like they w were just waiting for me to put one more up over a minute to do this. And so I said... Who else did that Christopher Walken impression? That is me on the screen. That's me improvising comedy in front of you. Those are my words. That's my news story. And they go, nope, unoriginal. And now I'm out of the program. And so, guys, I left a very frustrated note on TikTok about it and also on Clapper and on YouTube just to share because I think people should know how I'm being treated by all the platforms. It's not just YouTube who calls me harmful. They all think I'm harmful. Why? because we get together here in the moment. They don't want that. They don't want us breaking away from their negativity at all. They want you connected to the teat of negativity and destruction. And if there's a program out there that's delivering truth, if there's a program out there that's delivering something that we could connect on, oh, no, 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 that is harmful to you, my friends. That is harmful. And so, Will, how are you, my friend? Very good to see you. If you guys are out there, please communicate with me in the chat. All you have to do is say hello on X. I should see all of your chats here on X, people. And we're Rumble, I can't see your, your chats on Rumble. Please chat it up over there on Rumble, guys. I still have to figure out how to get that on the screen so I could see whoever's on Rumble with me. But we need to build out Rumble. We need to build out X because I'm freaking being destroyed by TikTok. I'm being destroyed by YouTube. I can't make money on either of those platforms and I've been live for 1,919 days in a row. I mean, what, ki what kind of world are we living in when a guy who decides to, for the kindness out of, kind of his heart, say, you know what? I'll make a few dollars on the advertising that they put out there on these, these platforms because they can't let me be found. And now they've taken that from me after five years in a row going live and being kept from you. And I want to ask, if you're here and this is your first time, is this the first time you've ever seen me? I want to hear from people out there. Is this, when you get, is, who's this guy? Is this the first time you've ever seen a guy who's been live for 1,919 days in a row long form? And if that's the case, you should be concerned that I've been doing this for 1,919 days in a row and this is the first time they've let you see me. And you gotta say why, maybe it's because you suck, Mark. Well, stick around, stick around and see if that's the case. But the point is, they don't even let you see me. They won't let you see anything that they're afraid of. And I believe you have the ability to use your finger. You could scroll if you don't like something, but they don't want that. They don't even want you to have the opportunity to see my show, a show that creates live music in the moment. There's a guy named Harry Mack who absolutely destroys. He's the, I think he's one of the best rappers on earth. And I do that with guitar, and with this loop station and with my drum, I invented. And every day I write songs. This I wrote last night. 
You got to hear this. The point is, every day we write music, every day there's a piece of music that happens on this show that everybody should have an opportunity to know about. Whether or not you like my music, whether or not you like my voice, you like my guitar playing, you should know there's a guy who's writing a piece of music for you every day of the year. But they won't let you know that. They won't let you know a guy will come out here and without a script every single day, he'll try to bring something fire to you. Something that's real. They don't want you to know that. They want you to continue to be a freaking... In their, their, un, this, this, I, I, I am having a problem with this. I can't even explain it anymore. Like, there's so much destruction, so much division, so much distraction, and all of it is intentional. There's nothing going on right now that's meant to, 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 to bring us together. It's all intending to divide us and conquer us. And why aren't we smart enough to see past it and say, let's come together, people, I mean, I have two perspectives here. I'm like, this guy either is the biggest scumbag in history or they're taking him down for something else because he has some information, some dirt on something. Like, I don't know. And then you start thinking, like, everybody's all of a sudden involved in this thing, but it's not all of a sudden. Let's just get into it. I want to see if we can find anything on Ashton Kutcher, specifically in P. Diddy. We're going to Google. You guys are on with me. Ashton Kutcher, P. Diddy. Apparently he's being called in. Here we go. Ashton Kutcher is expecting a subpoena over good friend Diddy's sex uh, probe, and his wife Mila Kunis bans him from speaking to the rapper. Months after a couple were slammed for supporting a convicted racist, Danny Masterson. The actor, 46, won't be showing any public support for the hip-hop mogul, although they're like best friends. You know, they used to do the deeds together, you know? That'll come out. Well, we're going we're gonna to find that out. Ashton Kusher is expected to subpoena over his good friend. We already got to this part just months after supporting their best friend ever. Like, he still calls him every day to check on him. Danny Masterson. Uh, Diddy's Miami and Los Angeles mansions were raided by the Federal Homeland Security Investigative Division. We're changing that a bit. While his alleged associate, Brendan Paul, 25, was accused of being a drug mule, was arrested by police. That happened in tandem. They're like, we got Diddy. They're like, where's that scumbag mule? The drug mule, you know, Brendan Paul. Diddy 54 and Ashton 46 have been friends for decades, guys. You know what that means, right? He's at all the parties, you know. Oh, my name's Ashton. Yeah, we know. We saw you in the stupid show where you were an idiot. But now you're like this genius, apparently, like business mogul who's banging it out on the side with Diddy, you know, doing a lot of weird stuff. The former punk host will not be commenting on the scandal while insiders claiming his wife Mila, 40, has forbidden any contact. There he is with that goofy smile. There's no way in hell Ashton and Mila will be showing any sort of public support for Diddy right now, the source told Daily Mail. Well, look, all I know is he's getting subpoenaed. That dude's going in. And I don't know if he, I, I honestly, he's one of the guys in Hollywood that I've always been like, he seems like a really good guy, like a lot of philanthropy. And he's like, really, he stopped like acting and now he's doing things for the world and creating businesses to try to help the planet. And I'm like, I don't know, like, unless he's like, I did so much stuff with Diddy that now I got to make up for my, I sow my royal oats, so to speak, you know, like Hakeem from coming to America. I, I think he's, there's something deeper than maybe because like he's doing that really good PR job where we as the world are like, Ashton Kutcher's the really good guy, but he could be a total scumbag like Diddy, you know? And like, they're at the party together and they're like looking at dudes and he's like, oh, how old is he? Like, oof, Ashton. Diddy, I've seen so many videos in the last couple of days with this, this guy. Like, I'm like now completely co convinced he's a horrible guy. I, mean, I always knew he killed Biggie and Tupac, right? I mean, you knew that. But I'm thinking that there's more. There's more involved with this guy behind these eyes. Guys, you know what I say about the eyes. You could tell a scumbag in a moment, a murderer, you know. Just look at the eyes. This guy, you know right now he's thinking about like a 13-year-old boy. This guy's messed up. 
That freaking noggin too. What happened to that thing? You know. Anyway, if you guys don't know, I, I try to roast people when we're in the Middle East things. So like, roasting P Diddy is those stupid freaking eyes. I mean, look at him, guys. He's ready to go and murder another rapper and take all of his income and put it in his pocket to buy another piece of property on his island. You know, he just bought another piece of property on his island in Florida, um, which I don't think he'll be able to use in a few months. He'll be in jail or he'll be somewhere in like a, a part of the world where we're like, remember that guy P Diddy bleached his skin. He shows up in a few years, you know, he's like a whole other guy, St. George Combs, something like that, you know, but he's going around and calling himself love. And they're like, I don't know. So again, I saw something else crazy. And now I'm just saying how this thing's widening. It, I want to try to find this video. I'm a little nervous to find it and see if I play it. It may get me in trouble, but it's a video and it's all, it's been all over. You guys may have seen it on Clapper. I saw it on Clapper. I saw it on TikTok. And it's a video of this camera in a club coming around a corner and you hear like Diddy or someone saying, yeah, I got to feel that. You know what I mean? And like, it goes to a video, uh, like a picture of o Odell Beckham Jr., OBJ. And he's getting the OBJ from Justin Bieber. Like, it's weird. Like, Beebs is on the ground, and he comes up like, what are you filming me for? I'm doing the OBJ. We're like, we know you're doing the OBJ. I didn't know he was into that. Like, I, you, you know? But remember, he was at Diddy's at 14. He's a 14-year-old walking around the Diddy house for, for about a month, you know? Diddy's like, I can't take custody to him like I did Usher, but he, we going, we going buck wild. And, and little 14-year-old Bieber looks up to me and goes, we go, we, we're going wild? He goes, yeah, we're going buck wild. And you're like, what the, this guy's out of, look at the eyes, guys, the eyes. Guys, if you want to, you head over to X Rumble or YouTube, you could see the freaking eyes of Scumbag McGee over here, Sean Combs. I'm almost a billionaire. Yeah, but you're also a scumbag, you know? Like, he's like the 2024 Epstein, you know? Like, come to my island. <laughs> All right, buddy, you know, we're, not, we're good with going to your island filled with cameras. You guys know he had cameras everywhere. They said he had cameras on the shower heads so he could film people that were showering at his parties and people in the bathrooms. There was cameras, hidden cameras everywhere in his scumbag, you know, abode. Some people call it an abode. We call it, like... I don't know, it's like Big Brother, but like with a weird Epstein vibe to it, you know, where he's in the back in his own room, watching, flipping channel to channel. Oh, look, look what's going on in the guest suite. What's that? Guest suite number four. Because they're like, which, which guest suite is that out of your 914 guest suites in this stupid island that you own? <sighs> Killed Biggie, Tupac, you guys know it, right? Anyway, uh, regardless of Ashton's long history with him, he has distanced himself from Diddy since Cassie's lawsuit. Now, Cassie's his ex-girlfriend, who apparently, this is Diddy's ex-girlfriend, who apparently he beat, he was physical with. He was abusive with Cassie. And then she dated him for 11 years. Like, that one I still have a problem with. Look, I understand, like, the Me Too thing and all that, absolutely. When something like that happens, people need to be held accountable. But when you say a guy was mean to you, abusive with you, physically abusive with you, but then you go on and date him for 11 more years or 11 years. Like, and I don't know the full story. Maybe she's like, no, it was great for 10. <laughs> you know, it could have been that. She could be like, it was great for 10. And then this last year, he just started beating the hell out of me. Like then, you know what? I'm sorry, my bad, you know? But I thought like, it, it, the way I read it originally was like that, like she met the dude and he was like abusive to her. And like, she's like, no, let's date. You know, I don't know. It just seemed, but I, I'm, it's probably not that. Ashton and his wife Mila came under fire after sharing letters of support for former 70s star co-star Danny Masterson, you know, the scumbag. He pleaded for the judge to show leniency against the actor before he was sentenced to 30 years. Danny, 47, had already been found guilty of two women when the Hollywood A-listers aired their pleas. Guys, He's just a pedo, like, you know, let, it, let, him, let him go. He's Danny. You didn't just see him on the show? Danny Road. You know, you get it. Uh, anyway, this is basically at the end of it. Ashton and Mila are having, they're laying down super low since this all happened. I'll tell you what, guys, he's going down. We should see the news. Has he, has he been pulled in yet today? You know it, right? They're like, Ashton Kutcher has pulled in. There's a deep, dark, ra dark rabbit hole that we have to get into. Uh, let's see, arrested. We're going to just say it questioned 
about Diddy. Oh, look, someone's already asking that. Would it be wrong to assume that your friendship with Sean P. Diddy Combs had something to do with you wanting to make this movie? Kutcher was asked about a 2005 interview with Daily Herald. Herald. Kutcher was busy promoting Guess Who, a loose remake of the 1967 classic Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I don't know what the hell that is. So was, was, was P. Diddy in that movie or something? Guess Who? Oh, see right here? This is six hours ago with Daily Beast, which, you know, sometimes it's just like really trying to push a little agenda. But let's see what they say. Last week, federal officials raided two properties. We know it. And now there is five civil lawsuits that have been filed since November 2023. Combs also fa faces allegations of soliciting and distributing narcotics. Why does this thing keep kicking around? Like, I'm trying to read it. Sexual assault and gang ray, you know? TMZ reported, according to its sources, subpoenas have already begun to be issued to multiple businesses affiliated with Combs, including a phone provider and his privately chartered jet. One such actor is Cuba Gooding Jr. You know, show me the money. He was doing something else. Show me the hiney butt. Whom producer Rodney Lil Jones named in a lawsuit against Combs. Jones accused uh, Gooding Jr. of groping him in a makeshift studio. What's with all these actors liking to grope men? Like, if you could do it, just come out and be like, I like men. But like this idea that like, oh, I'm married, I got kids. And then they're like groping some dude in like a makeshift studio on a yacht. Like what? <laughs> just seems pretty odd to me. I don't understand. Like unless there's like this other thing going on in this world, I just don't know. Actor and venture capitalist Ashton Kutcher, who's also married and has kids, but gropes men apparently when he's in a makeshift studio on a yacht. Uh, his former sh friendship goes back decades with Combs, reportedly expecting to be subpoenaed as part of the sex <laughs> investigation into Combs. Kutcher has yet to comment. He's not going to. Uh, the 70s show launched the 20-year-old Kutcher into breakout star status in 1998. Five years later, the actor co-created and produced the MTV series Punked, spawning a cultur cultural phenomenon, which the sophomore prank show debuted in 20. Uh, 2003. Anyway, guys, at the end of the day, what do you think? Do you think Ashton Kutcher is going to be involved in this? Do you think he's a, a, like a scummy guy? I don't know. I can't really see that. I think Ashton Kutcher is a good guy. I'm still thinking that. Until I see more, uh, he may just be a guy. Look, you guys know you have friends that are into stuff you just don't know about. I have friends. I don't even have that many friends, to be honest. I, I have my family, and I do this show. This show is like my friends. And that's basically it. I've been here 1,919 days in a, uh, in a row. I shut the sh my, my TV off 1,900 days ago over, you know? Like, I started the show, and I said, I'm never watching TV again. I'm like, I've, basketball comes on the other day, March Madness. I watched for a few minutes. Outside of that, that TV's off, always. It's the negatube. That's what I call it. I, I actually should have coined that when I came up with that term. But it's called the negatube because that's exactly what you get from it, negativity. And so I decided to shut it off and be the positivity on this platform and do my own posi TV thing. So my hope is that you guys continue to spread the word that there is at least one platform on earth that intends to be as positive as possible in a world that's completely negative. And we do it every day of the year, twice a day now. And I'm now freaking banned from making money. And I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. Like I, I thought about that. I'm like, why am I still doing this? I can't make any money. Like I, I, I'm married with three kids. I'm a realtor. Go be a realtor, dude. Like, clearly you're not going to be successful at this. Nobody wants it. If someone really liked my show, they would start sharing it. And they would start getting people to come find me because after 1919 days in a row, it hasn't happened. And I think I'm almost out of gas. I mean, I just can't. I'm not able to make money on these platforms. If I get, can't get Patreon to be something or if I can't get uh, supporters in, other ma fashion, in another fashion, this is the gas tank is almost out, my friends, you know. 2,000 days in a row, I've already put my finger on that. If we can't go beyond that and get a crowd to, gr to join me when I'm on the air, I, I got to pull, pull the fucking plug on this. You know what I mean? And that's just the reality of life, unfortunately. You can't always do the things you want, and when you're good at things, it doesn't mean you can be successful at them. And I am, unfortunately, extremely good at putting on a show and writing songs in the moment and creating stupid, silly comedies. But in a world like today, it doesn't seem to matter. So... Let's get back to the news. Florida airboat flips, sending nine passengers into a gator-infested water. God almighty. Look at that freaking thing. 
An airport tour in the yeah, Florida Ever Everglades capsized, sending passengers <laughs> overboard. <laughs> this is scary stuff, guys. Oh, my goodness. The airboat driver took a sharp turn to try to see an alligator in the water and <laughs> freaking people. Oh, my goodness. I did. Oh, I am terrified of that. Not only terrified of being in, in alligator infested waters, but just being like on a boat and then all of a sudden out of that boat. Like, I am not a strong swimmer. It's one of the things, like, I don't know. I, I never really took swim lessons when I was a kid. I can swim. I can, I, I can obviously, like, sit there and, 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 and keep myself afloat and lie on my back. But realistically, I'm, I'm good at using my arms or using my feet. Like, together they seem weird. Like, I'm doing both and kicking. And I'm like, this seems odd because I never really took the, the lessons to properly do it. So if I fell into the open ocean... I'm done. I am done, people. Probably because I just freaked myself out that what the hell is underneath me? You know what I mean? I just terrified of dark water, you know? <laughs> but then also, like, do you want to have water you can see? And then you're seeing this freaking shark just circle you for 20 minutes while you're hoping someone comes to save you, Coast Garden it. Oh, goodness. Miami Dade Re Fire Rescue said three units responded to a waterway near Cooperstown, the original airboat tour in Everglades, Florida. By the time they arrived, everyone had climbed out of the water and only one patient was treated for injuries on the scene. Wow, that's the Everglades right there, guys. I, I mean, just think about that. You wind up falling or something. You, what if you have a, an issue and you can't reach anyone and you're sitting in that boat, that little freaking dinghy, you know? Hover boat, whatever the hell they call that thing. Airboat. Passengers told the boat operator was trying to get a closer look at the nearby alligator. Guys, take a look at this. Did you see that alligator over there? Just lean over the edge. I would not want to be on that boat, I'll tell you. Ah, crazy, crazy stuff going on in the world. After welcoming guests for 67 years, the Tropicana Las Vegas Casino's final day has arrived. The Trop? You guys are going to the Trop. Hold on a moment. It's the last day of the trip. I'm going down to play craps. I'm going to see if I can win big. Last day. In 1971, Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond is in the swanky suite at the Tropicana in Las Vegas. I hear the Hotel Tropicana is quite comfortable. Agent 007 says. It was the Tropicana's heyday. The lavish casino was a frequent haunt of the legendary Pat Rat Pack. Remember that, guys? Snatch, you got Snatch. He did the baby blue. After welcoming guests for 67 years, the doors to Las Vegas Strip's third oldest casino will be chained shut at noon Tuesday. And the demolition is slated for October to make room for the $1.5 billion Major League Baseball Stadium. No freaking way! That's awesome! Vegas is, I mean, I, I think I heard Vegas was getting a baseball team, but to put it right there, like in downtown, so you like walk to the stadium, that's freaking awesome, man. Like, I don't, I haven't been to Vegas, I only went once, but like, that would be pretty sweet to be like, oh, I'm over here throwing some craps. I'm going to watch a game in 20. Like, you, you want to take the taxi? You want to, I'm walking. It's right freaking day. You got to take a taxi? I'm taking a walk. I'm going to walk it off. Walk it off, Dick. Right? Population of Clark County has surpassed 100,000 when the Tropicana opened in the strip surrounded by vast open desert. It cost $15 million to build three stories with 300 rooms split into two wings. Its manicured lawns and elegant showroom earned it the nickname Tiffany of the Strip. There was a towering tulip-shaped fountain near the entrance, mosaic tiles, and mahogany paneled walls throughout. Black and white photos from the time give a view into what it was like inside the Tropicana at its height. When it frequently hosted A-list stars in its showroom, Elizabeth Taylor, Debbie Reynolds to Frank Sinatch. You got a Sinatch! I'm there with the baby blue! You know? And Sammy Davis, Sammy Davis. I don't know what Sammy Davis sounded like, I forget. Oh, guys, wow. Well. Uh, Mel Torme. Guys, remember Mel Torme and Eddie Fisher? Don't know who the hell that is. At the Trop. Gladys Knight and Wayne Newton, you know. Donka Shane. Right, you guys, Wayne Newton doing the Donka Shane. 
Uh, I was trying to remember that. In a city known for a reinvention, the Tropicana itself underwent major changes in Las Vegas as Las Vegas evolved to hotel, to hotel, hotel ugh. I need to drink something here. I wish I had something in this, but I don't drink alcohol. Just a fresh coffee. 1979, a $1 million green and amber stained glass ceiling was installed above the casino floor. Guys, a $1 million green and amber stained glass. I hope they're taking that mother thing out before they demolish, you know? Let's just demo the whole thing. What about the million dollar glass ceiling you have in there? Fuck it! Let's break it into pieces. I wonder if they could have us save the hundred million dollar, save the million dollar green and amber stained glass ceiling fund slash like protest, you know, where they're outside and they're like, save the stained glass. Then you just put it out as like, just, I don't even know what you do with it, but you don't break a million dollar green and amber stained glass ceiling. When, by the way, in 1979, it was a million. Do you know how much that would be now? <laughs> Inflation! Let's just see. We're going to find out what inflation would be if we were looking at it now. Okay. 1979, $1 million would be worth, is worth what today? Let's see. Because we want to see how much that stained glass is worth. Here we go. $28 is worth $119 today. So what would that mean? Average inflation rate of 3.28%. Price difference is $91.68. CPI. I don't know what any of these things mean, to be honest. Um, but where is this CPI inflation calculator? Let's go. We're we doing it. CPI in inflation calculator. Guys, this is, the, this is why I love the show. We can do it. We can go in there. We can find it together. Bureau of Statistics. Thank you. So in, we had a million, one million dollars. Dr. Evil. Hold on. It's not working. Blue. Oh, it is working. It's from the left, from the right to left, apparently. Okay, a million dollars in January of 19 Sabato died. And in January of 2024 would be worth $4.515 million. Guys, that stained glass is worth $4.5 million. Demo, September demo, Slay Dad. We're slating the demo. Unreal, you know, like I would put that stained glass on my ceiling. You know, now I have a roof that I can see the stars, green and amber, but still I could see the stars. And instead, they want to demo it. It's a bunch of horse crap, you know? No appreciation for art anymore. Imagine the guy who created that. He's like, what are you doing with my stained glass ceiling that I put in there in 1979 for a million dollars? You know it's worth 4.5 now, right? If I did that today and you were like, hey, I want you to do the stained glass. Like, if I got the call today. Um, <clears throat> yes, is this William Schnick Nick Vilevy? Hi, yeah, no, we're looking for a green and amber stained glass ceiling, exactly like you did in 1979, for a new casino that we're opening up here in Vegas. What's that going to run us? Oh, 4.515 million? Oh, good, it was a mil you know it was a million back in 1970. You charged them a million bucks in 1979, and now you're going up to 4.515? Like, what do you think you're worth, like, $3.5 million more? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, inflation? What is that? No, they said that it's down. They, he, they said he's doing a good job. Gas prices, too. They're only $2 more than they used to be. You know? Yeah. No, I... Okay, I get it. So you're just... Everything's cost more now because our government overspends? Oh, I get it, William. Yeah. No, you do great work, by the way. It's just hard saying your last name. Right? So, you know, that's what we do in the process. A Texas woman is suing prosecutors who charged her with murder after her self-induced taking of baby's life. Like, this is mental. Cargo ship's owner and manager seek to limit liability to... Do you guys hear about the guy who owns the bridge that went down? Do you know who it is? The guy who owned the World Trade Center. And do you know what his insurance policy was for the bridge? A trillion dollars. A trillion dollars, guys. One trillion dollars. I'm not even joking. And And... 
Hold on. I want to see if that's actually... Because I heard that, and I'm like... My wife told me that, and she wouldn't just make that up. So I want to find out. Like, is that true? Baltimore Bridge, Key Bridge, insurance coverage. Oops. Doesn't look like a trillion. But I think I was getting another two to four billion. So stupid. And I heard a trillion. I was like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, monetarily, like, that doesn't make sense, a trillion. Okay, let's see. The legal battle will be over who pays what is in this shipping accident could cost as much as $4 billion. And now that is to probably redo the bridge. But what is the insurance policy? Let's see. Coverage by your insurance pool of up to $3.1 billion. Man. You know, isn't it interesting? So, like, where does that money come from? So, like, for example, you are an insurance company, and you've got a policy for $4 billion to give, you know, a bridge owner, for example. The worst case scenario takes place, and the bridge collapses, right? Now, how the heck do you get how the hell do you get $4 billion from somebody? Like, do they just have that sitting in a freaking fund somewhere? They're like, oh, we have $30 billion and we're just waiting for something to go wrong so we could pay, have payouts? Or is it like just shifting different pieces around the board? Oh, uh, we have to do this and move this in order to get the money to go and pay off this liability that we've been holding on to. Like, I'm just curious how it works. It's, I actually knew a guy who had a reinsurance company and he sold a bunch of these companies and he became like a billionaire. I sold his house a few years ago. One of the most fascinating men I've ever met in my life. This guy was close to 70 years old. He had a 20,000 square foot house with this sports complex with a golf simulator and had every game you could think of. For He did it all for his kids. And it was one of the coolest places ever I've, I've ever had the pleasure and, and uh, the honor to represent and to also sell. Uh, but this man was very, very intriguing, but he was also extremely wise. And I, I'd go and see him, and, and it's a very short story, but I used to go see him at his office. His house was listed by seven different agents. I was a new agent. I used to wear a suit every day. And I went in the office to see this guy, and I had a client I was working with, actually, that were, was playing for the New York Yankees at the time. And he was looking for something unique. And I knew about this property with the 20,000 square feet, the sports complex. I'm like, this is perfect for the guy. So I called... Um, or I went to see this gentleman and I said, look, I know you had your house in the market. Uh, it's not on the market now, but I've got a guy who's a New York Yankee and he wants to move into something unique. Would you ever consider showing it? He goes, actually, I've you know, been trying to sell it on the side. If you sell it, I'll give you all the commission. And I was like, no way. Like, this guy seems like a cool guy. And I knew him through his son. His son played basketball. I played basketball. He's older than me, but I did know his son and his son's a really sweet, sweet guy. He's a sweet man. And so, um, I had that connection. And so I went and see him. I said, look, I, I remember your son, and, and I just I, I wanted to show. And he goes, yeah, let, let's do it. I'll give you all the commission. I was like, wow, I've never heard anybody say that. They usually say, yeah, I'll just give you the commission for the buy side. And he said, I'll give you the list side and the buy side if you sell it to this guy. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So I show it to my guy, but my guy doesn't like it. So I went back to see him the following Monday, and I just said, hey, I just want to thank you for letting, letting me show it to this, to this uh, client. Um, but I'd love an opportunity to actually list and sell your house. I was like, this is an amazing house. I don't know why it didn't sell the first couple times. I think it's because the market's been tough in this area for a very long time until we got to COVID. Why isn't this working? I can't charge my phone. Come on. There we go. So the market was always tough in Connecticut until COVID take, uh, came around. Long story short, I went to see him 13 months in a row. He said, no, I'm not listing the house right now. I'm keeping it off market. He goes, and then something he said to me stuck out. He goes, every agent comes in, they want my listing, and then I never hear from them again. And when he said that, I just filed that in my mind. I said, okay, I'm going to go and see this guy every three weeks to a month until he gives me an opportunity to represent him. So for a full year, I think it was 13 months, I went in there every month. And I would never ask for the listing again. I just went in there to see him. Actually, I asked once, I'll tell you that. So I, I went and see him like six months in a row. 
And every time I went in, I thought he'd be like, I don't have time for this kid. He's got like a billionaire. He has two offices in downtown New Canaan, Connecticut. And he's already sold all these businesses. So he just has the offices. He's like doing all this philanthropic work. He donated a $250 million building to Harvard. Like this guy's like legit ridiculous, like silly, crazy money. But money he never showed. He, did not, he was not a flaunt. He like you wouldn't know it if you saw him on the street. Old money is really weird like that. You don't know they have money. This guy would go out in jeans and a t-shirt and drive around on like a beat up little like old Tercel. And you know, but he, he also had a Rolls and he had a Mercedes, all these other things. But he'd drive around in the car so people wouldn't even know he's rich. It's like a great story about him. He said, and, and this is something I heard secondhand, but he went down to go buy a car at Mercedes. And they didn't look at him. They were like, this guy doesn't have money. He walked in with t jeans and a t-shirt. And they were like, just nobody gave him a, a, a second. He's like, I want to try this car. And they're like, oh, well, can you afford it? They said that to him. And he walked out. And he, drove, he walked down the street to Rolls Royce and bought a Rolls Royce with cash. And then drove back down the street and pulled in front of the, of the Mercedes. Walked inside. And he said, I just want to let you know, I was here to buy a car. But you weren't willing to help me, so I went and bought a car. And he went, got back in his Rolls Royce, and he drove away, and the people were just there, like, jaw on the ground. And that's, that's real. I've had people walk into listings of mine that were super expensive, and you're like, this person looks like they're a bum. They're millionaires. People are extremely unassuming when they've got money like that. They're not trying to show it. <laughs> it's like the complete opposite. It's the people that are showing it that you know they're like, it's really they want to be that. It's a weird thing. It's, a, it's this, this flip. Like, the people that really want to be that are trying so hard and they buy all the name brand stuff and they're like, look at me and my Gucci and my Chanel and all this stuff. But the people that really have all that money are selling you all the stuff. So it's like, they're the ones that are like, hey, let's sell them all the Chanel and all so they could think they could have that, the taste of what it's like to live this life. And they have that life. They're like jeans and t-shirt in it. So it's crazy. That's what this guy was. He's super laid back. And so I go in there six months in a row. And then the seventh month, I, had, I had actually I was the first person in, in Fairfield County to buy a drone. I did it because I saw an opportunity to provide a better experience to my, my real estate clients. I was noticing based on statistics that people spent like 1.3 to 1.5 seconds looking at the first photo of a listing. And I'm like, I got 30 photos. If they're only looking for 1.3 seconds, that means they're only looking at that first photo. I'm just doing the math in my head. So I was like, my first photo has got to be ridiculous then. So I said, I got to get a drone. No one had done it yet, 2013. So I went and bought a drone. My wife was like, what are you doing? This is like five grand. I spent five grand on this drone, guys. But I thought about it. I was like, if I can get one listing, two listings, three listings out of this drone, I'll pay myself back for the drone. And now it's just a new service that I'm offering for free. So 2013 was also the year that the FAA was saying you could not fly drones commercially. Well, I was a guy who was saying, you FAA, because I don't charge anybody for it. I'm a real estate agent. And when people hire me to list their homes, I go there and I shoot the drone 50 times. I'll shoot it one time, 100 times. I don't charge them for any of it. When I sell that property, I get paid back for my service, which is everything I do. But one of the free services I offer is drone photography. They tried to shut me down. I was on the news all year. I was on Fox News. I was on NBC News. And these are all Connecticut stations, not Fox regular. It was at Fox News, Connecticut, NBC News, Connecticut, Channel 12 News, Channel 8 News. I was in the local papers as the guy. I was the first guy to think of it, but also the expert on drone technology because of it. So I got a great plaque downstairs I could show you where they did the article, they plaqued it out and sent it to me in, in 2013. Anyway, so doing the drone thing, and I called and went to see him, actually. I went to see this gentleman, and I said, look, they want me to be on Fox News Connecticut tonight, and they asked me if I have a listing that I could you know, do the broadcast from. They're looking for something really cool. And I said, any chance you want to list your house? Let's, let's put it on the market, get on TV. And like the first thing we see is your house is going on the market. We're talking about the drone. There's this, this really parallel, uh, paral, um, it's like a paralyzing story at the time. It's like, are you going to get arrested? People were wondering if I was going to get arrested for doing this still. And so I was like, I'm going to keep doing it. They could ch knock on my door. I'm, I don't charge. You can, can't call me commercial. And then they tried to tie it to the, well, you're getting paid at the end of the transaction, so it is commercial. I was like, no, okay, let's go to court. I'm happy to do that. And nobody ever knocked, so that was good. But he didn't want to listen. He goes, I don't want to put it on the market. He goes, I've been on the t TV before. His house is already on NBC Open House, like the real one, <laughs> you know, like years before. And so I was like, ah, oh, I got nothing on that. So it's the only time I asked him. And then I went in on month 13, and as I walk in, the doors are open. The doors were never open in his office. They were always closed. The other one was open. It was his secretary. His two secretaries would be there. And his one secretary was like my good friend. I'd go in there. We'd always chat for 20 minutes before he'd be like, yeah, send Mark in. And he'd hit me with these pearls. Like I'd sit there with them and he'd say, I said, how did you find this success? And like, I, I'm just, 
I'm here, I'm hustling. He goes, look, I'll tell you. He said, I was a young pharmaceutical salesman and insurance salesman. I'm sorry, he was an insurance salesman in Idaho, fresh out of college. And he goes in to see private practice doctors. That's what his first business was. And so he's going, knocking on doors. He's going in to see these doctors who already are represented by other insurance companies. And so he goes to see this one doctor, he's a younger guy, and he says, you know, I'm, I'm here to see if, if I could help you with an insurance product, if you're maybe needing anything. The guy goes, okay, well, here's what I have. Take a look, let me know what I'm missing. And so he looks through it and he says, you know, whoever prepared this for you did a good job. Do you have any new, do you have any new employees? Do you have any new children, anything like that? The guy goes, no, no, nothing new. And he goes, well, what you have here is really good. You know, if anything ever changes, I'd love an opportunity to earn your business. And he goes, wait, what do you mean? Read it, look at it again. And he goes, no, sir, I looked at it. Whoever prepared this did a nice job, but I'd still like to at least have an opportunity to compete against them. If you ever have any changes in your business, in your, in your philosophies going forward, you're going to expand. Uh, please give me a call. I'd love an opportunity to earn your business. And the guy goes, look again. And he goes, I already did, sir. This is a good plan. And he goes, I've never had an insurance salesman, salesman not try to upcharge me on something to get like that loaf of milk or whatever, or a loaf of bread, a, a, another gallon of milk or whatever for their family next month. And my client said, the fact that he had integrity with this doctor, this doctor went and told all of his friends and every doctor started calling my client for their insurance needs. And he took over the entire area. And then he said, and then he started his own company. And then before that, he sold that. And then he started another one. But it all started by having integrity and being someone who's willing to hustle for the work and having an opportunity to compete. And he goes, what I have to tell you, he goes, I see that in you. He goes, you keep showing up to see me. He goes, you don't even ask for my listing. He goes, you keep showing up. He goes, and that's what it takes. He goes, and it may not happen today for you, Mark. He goes, it may not happen for you tomorrow. He goes, but it's going to. He goes, because you are doing it. He goes, everything I did is what you're doing. But it's, it's a weird thing because everything's about time. For me, my timing was insurance. You're a realtor. He didn't know anything about what I'm doing now, but he said, which I'm still a realtor, but um, he didn't know, this show didn't exist at the time. But um, he said, whatever you put your energy into, you're gonna wind up being very successful at because you're working with the same tenements, the same model that I did. He goes, that's why you're sitting here in the seat. And I thought about that for a second. I'm a young, like 28 year old, 30 year old kid sitting there in a suit with a billionaire who's telling me, giving me pearls of wisdom. And he's like, the only reason I'm telling you this, Mark, is because I see you and I see me. I see what I did and I see it in you. He says, so just keep going. That's what he said to me. He goes, just keep going, don't stop. And I'm like, man. So it's like sometimes when I do get down on the fact that they keep me from the world or like they keep a piece of content from people just because they don't like the, con the, the, um, the perspective or whatever it is, they, they fear comedy, whatever it is, I'll get frustrated and then I think about something like this gentleman telling me who did this and he's like, look, sometimes you have to fight and it's a really long battle, but success only comes to those who don't quit. You gotta keep driving towards something you believe in. And that's what I do every day of my life. I show up here and I try to continue to put something positive into this world. And which is also why my motto is to affect a positive change one person at a time. It's not a, a, a massive mission. It's just one person a day. And, and for me, that's why I'm here 1,919 days in a row. If, if I was a guy who was like, I'm changing the world tomorrow. And then I'm here of 1,900 days and I can't get to people, I would have quit. I would have quit so long ago, but I do it for the art. I do it for this, for this moment we get to spend together and a moment away from the distractions of the world. There are many, and this is a positive distraction from a negative world. Everything I do here is intending to entertain you and to take you away from it, because I know we all have to go back to it as soon as I go off the air. And that's why I come back and do it again later on. Because like, if I could twice a day give us a reprieve from the insanity and a place in this chat where we can all hang out and feel like you could say what you want, you could be around cool people, you see the same people every day. And that's why I really ask people, even though YouTube has now called me harmful, they said the thing out loud that they've known for a very long time, but they said I'm a harmful channel. I still, we're at 15,000 subscribers there. And I want to blow that thing out to a 15 million and say, screw YouTube, I don't need you guys. There are people who will support me on Patreon. There are people who will support me other ways. They'll buy my music on iTunes, and that'll be a way I'll support my family. I don't need YouTube's money. I don't need it. I would like it. I think I deserve it. I've been live with them for over five years in a row just delivering positive content that's considered harmful. But 
when you're in the twilight zone, you have to realize when you're doing something to affect a positive change in the world, you are harmful. You are harmful when you're trying to affect positive change in this world. Because the world wants negativity, division, and destruction. And it's not the people that want that. It's the world. It's the leaders. And we keep electing them. That's the crazier thing. So we're going to start and continue to see more stuff like this. Bridge, bridges collapsing. You see the other day, there's another one that almost happened in like Mississippi. I covered it. Uh, this barge, like gets lo it breaks loose. Convenient. And it slams in the side of a bridge. The bridge almost goes down. I'm like, you know, we had the train car incidents last year with all the chemicals. Now we have this. And it's like, you couldn't be any more clear you know, as to what you're trying to do this country. I mean, there's no way to bring in massive equipment into the, the eastern port of the United States anymore. Nobody realized how, how massive of, of a destructive act that was. That's why when I made a comedic piece of content on that news story of a guy named Igor who's mending the boat and he pulls the boat into the bridge to take it down for Vladimir Putin, it was a joke. But there's some truth to it. Someone, I feel like, was like, yeah, I think this is a good way for us to... De destabilize America. I mean, all these things, everything that's happening is, is a destabilization effort that's taking a period of time. It's like nothing happens immediately. It all happens over a period of time. So most of us are in the dark. The ones that actually see it are sidelined. You know? Ah, oh, Lori's in the house. So glad you're here. Yeah, everyone's sidelined if they have something positive to, to add to the conversation. They're considered, they're labeled as um, uh, this has been fact-checked and, you know, we had someone look at this. And, and the reality is, and I said this the other day, I do not look at anything unless it's fact-checked. I don't even read it unless it's fact-checked. If it's fact-checked, I know it's, there's truth there. If there's nothing and I just see a story and I'm scrolling, I'm like, there's, that's a lie, 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 lie. The only stuff that's true is the stuff that's been fact-checked. Keep that in mind. Just like you'll know if something's true if somebody comes out and they complain about something or they're a whistleblower and they talk about something that's like completely disgusting and immoral, like what they're doing with children, and instead of them saying, oh my goodness, uh, we need to really get a team to look into this and try to stop this, they go after the person, cancel the person and call them a crazy conspiracy theorist. And that's what happened to the gentleman who did the Sound of Freedom movie, um, Jim Caviezel. He just said, look, we have a major issue here in this country. And this is a story, it's a true story. This isn't a made up event that we're like, hey, let's Hollywood it. Let's go in there and let's write up a script about this trafficking that's going on. No, this is real world stuff that took place. This guy existed, he's still alive, he does interviews, and Caviezel played him in a movie. This is real world stuff, okay? And instead of them saying, gosh almighty, we have a major issue here we have to f find a solution to. They canceled the movie, and they canceled Jim Caviezel. When that happens, you know it's real, and you know that there's evil at work here. Who the f would, would cancel an effort to try to stop trafficking? The people that are doing it. And then you say, okay, well, who are the people that are doing it? Well, if the people that are making the decisions are the ones that are doing it, then we are the ones who have to collect it's on us, guys. Do you think there's somebody above us that's going to somehow look out for us? I think we have one opportunity. It's, it's starting to go out the window because they're literally canceling people from speaking out and trying to connect. And like, if we don't build and we don't find that place where like every single day we're like, we're there, we're there and we're away from it. This is, this gets bad quick. Does anybody else like feel it? I feel it. I could like feel everything is just so disturbing right now. And every news story I see, like let's just for an example show you. I wanna, this is when you pop on Yahoo, okay? I just open up Yahoo and this is the first thing you see. Trump verbally attacks judges. Are you kidding me? Because he's a stupid judge. And then you got Chef Jose Andres, heartbroken after seven charity workers killed in Israeli strike. Every, okay, Caitlin Carr, Clark, there we go. There's one positive story. Oh, my goodness. Arizona officer dies after crashing into patrol car with sirens on. I mean, I'm actually surprised this first four stories is not about the election that's coming up, you know? But it's all really, really disgusting. 
Diddy Combs, this is happening now. And you know what you have to say to yourself? If the Biebs is going down an OBJ, which is what seemed to be happening in that video right here. There he is. The Biebs. They're, ha they're having marital problems. I think it's because he had a dong in his mouth. That's what it seems like. Haley Bieber gives fans an Easter celebration with husband as concerning old videos of Justin with Diddy Combs resurface. Did you guys see these? Happy Easter. Man, this guy, look at, look at the freaking eyes, right? Where are the eyes? There they are. No, you see, he hides them. He hides the eyes as often as possible. He's looking at him. He's wrecked right there, too. He'd been smoking all day. You could tell. Sometimes you could tell when those eyes are like that. He went from murderer to murdering a friggin' L. You know, he rolled it up. He's hanging out with Snoop. Snoop diggy dog. Right there doing it together. Oh, goodness. So, what do you guys think? Machine Gun Kelly uses oxygen chamber for tattoo recovery. Most painful I've ever experienced. Well, yeah. Why are you doing it then? Oh, because I need to make my body art. No, just make art. How about that? Like, let's just be an artist to make art. You don't have to go and make your body art as well. I put a tattoo up my neck. All right, you're doing that now? How long are we till, till we're doing the Mike Tyson and you got some weird emblem on the side of your face? I'm waiting for that. You know what I mean? You already had the weird thing now on this chin. Like, I don't know what he's doing. The, the comedy news ro roast of Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox is actually up on YouTube and Rumble, and it's hilarious. It really is. I, 21 minutes ripped these two apart. Oh, here we go. Today marks the day that I start the physical change of my body. We'll see what this turns out to be. This one session in. Oh my goodness. Today I decided to turn myself into a tattoo, like full. I'm all, I'm just one tattoo now. Why would someone do this? I don't even understand it. I know, no offense. Like, my entire body, like some, like. Second arm. Dude, this is so long. We've done about seven sessions. It's been about two weeks since we started. Yeah, this is the most painful shit I've ever experienced in my life. Man, look at the scars on his hands. That's what hurts you. I can't. Look at his elbow. What happened to his elbow? That's a fucking weird elbow. Is that my belly button? Yeah, big elbow. <laughs> oh my god. Look at my fucking belly button. <laughs> Sleeves. Why didn't you just buy a shirt? You know you put sleeves on his arm. Just freaking buy a shirt with the same design. Oh, Twilight Zone. I swear this is a freaking moron. Holy cow! I mean, this. Do you know the poor artists that created all the other stuff on his dumb body? The anarchy symbol, that's gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you an anarchist anymore or not? Machine gun. I told you guys, he uses a water machine gun. It's the green one, you know? It runs out of water really quick. You get like three shots. Oh, freaking A, I gotta fill it up again. You know? Machine Gun Kelly, you know? Like, guys, actually, it's funny. I watched him for the first time after I made that roast, and he's actually a great artist. Like, his music is great. I don't know about his rap music, but he sang a song, and I was like, dude, I'd like to actually rock out with that dude. I'll rip it up while he sings and plays. I'll sing and play. We could do something together. Because that dude's got a great voice and plays guitar all right, but definitely great voice. I was, like, surprised his voice is rock. He's got a rock voice, man. So, anyway, proud of your music, but what the on the sleeves thing, you know? I'm sleeving my arms. Okay, buddy. I'm just going to wear a shirt. What if you wanted to wear a blue shirt? You know, now you've gone black sleeves vibe on your entire body, you know? It's like they don't want to be human anymore. It's just weird. Like, why would you cover your entire body with tattoo color? I just, it's, I'm really at a loss. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to figure people out. 
And then he says the most painful thing. I was like, why do something that's painful? Like, I don't get that. I don't want to feel pain. Okay, I'm not a pain guy. Let me get it. I, oh, I can't wait to get another. You know, like, what is that? There's something weird. Ugh. Anyway, guys, I think we've done enough here. Pity Gomes, we've got enough. Record label fires back after male music producer accuses vocal. Of you know. I guess that's basically it, guys. Ernie Hudson, 78? No freaking way, dude. Look at him. That's March 21st. He's 78. Can you see that? Look at that. That Ernie Hudson. He's looking good for 78. I, I'm not a good judge of this anymore. I would say looking at him, he's 65, 68, 68. He's got 10 years. 78-year-olds don't look like that. You know what I mean? Let's see what it says. Ernie Hudson attends the London photo call of Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, March 21st, where the online fans drew rays for his physique. Good for you. 78. Clearly, he didn't get the bugaboo. You know? Oh, goodness. I think that's basically it. That's all we got here, guys, right? New York's judge says FDNY booing of Letitia James, pro-Trump chants, not about politics. Has to do with race. <laughs> Again, let's make everything about racism. So stupid. No, it could be that she's just freaking out trolling, trying to create an issue and bringing up horse, horse and carriage from 1852. Because that's all you got. Like, okay, no one was harmed. There's no one defrauded. And you're going after the former president of the United States of America. Yeah, there's nothing to see here. Oh, you child of interference. Like, okay, every other country I told you, you got Vladimir Putin, Zelensky, President Xi Hole. They're all taking notes. Like, oh, yeah, we have to do that. Eliminate our enemy. Yeah. That's what we should do next time around. Next time that we have a November event coming up. Let's just eliminate our enemy. <laughs> oh, wait, they do that already, don't they? Yeah, so we're taking a note from them, essentially. And then the American people are like, yeah, bad guy. He's a billionaire. I want to see his taxes. I want to see Nancy Peloison's taxes. Nancy Peloison. She was a senator for like 98 years. Worth $180 million, $94,000 a year she makes. How is Nancy Peloison worth $100 plus million? Uh, could it say be uh, insider trading? Yeah, and why don't we see her taxes? No, we want to see the billionaire's taxes when he was a billionaire on his way in. I want to see your taxes. Why? Billionaires don't pay anything. They, they use write-offs because these a-holes are the ones that set the rules. And I love that conversation with Killary. He's having on the stage, and she's like, well, you know, he takes he doesn't pay any taxes. Because well, I take advantage of the same system that you put in place, Killary. Like, what are we talking about? You couldn't set it to get rid of the loopholes like your friends, all of your special interest groups. They like it when you do the same thing the Trumper does. And he's winning big league. So bottom line is, until they change the, the law, the rules, these companies are always going to make out like bandits and we're getting the freaking shaft, you know? And, and there's nothing in the tax code that says that they can actually take our labor and we continue to freaking give it willingly each year. It's voluntary. But if you don't voluntarily give them your own money that you earned, they will put you in jail. What kind of voluntary system is that? We live in freaking Cuba. going there. Chinese Kobe Bryant doppelganger goes viral? What? That's, there's no way. Where is he? Because that's not him right there. There's no way. That's, that's freaking Kobe Bryant right there. Let me see if I can find this guy. Why would, why would they talk about him but not show us? Okay, let's see. We're finding the Chinese Kobe Bryant look alike. Oh, wow. He does look a lot like him. That's interesting. That is interesting. The Kobe. Hold on, guys. Let me pop this on real quick. I don't know what's on, but I got to take this phone call. I'll be right back.
a fire song, though, by the way. I'm so glad Lori came here for the music. She's staying for the comedy news. I will have to down. I'm actually uploading that song, I think, like today or tomorrow. So, we're over an hour. I try to keep these shows less than an hour so we don't get in trouble and maybe get some views for it. Wait, so this guy is a double decker. So, this is him before he shaved his head. Now he looks like Kobe. He doesn't have the lazy eye, though. You know, Kobe has that little bit of a lazy eye over here. Kobe Bryant was amazing, you know. But this guy does look a lot like him. Do you guys have a doppelganger? So, I was in Florida, and my in-laws had a place down there with, like, a pool. Like, everybody would go to the center pool. You know, it's like these communities. And so we... Whenever we'd visit them, we'd go to this pool with the kids. And one year, it was like the first couple years I went there, actually. My son was like two years old. And we're there in the pool. And across the pool, I saw me. I swear to God. This guy was me. His same body, same height, same hair, same nose. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, that's freaking me. And my wife looks and she's like, holy cow, that's literally you. Like, that's like your twin brother right there. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, too. I think we're both kind of like, that's freaking weird, you know? And so, I don't know why. I'm, I'm always the guy who will go up and talk to anybody. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? And I don't know why, to this date, I said to myself, well, I'll see him next year. I'll, I'll talk to him then. Never saw the guy again. He never came back or whatever. We maybe were there at different times always, but I never saw that guy again. And I always wanted to, and I wish I had said something, and this is just a, like a reminder to you as well. When you see somebody, say something. When you see someone you know, just be like, hey, Tim, what's going on? Oh, hey, Mark, how you doing? You don't know if there's a reason you're seeing each other. You don't know. But like, there's definitely a reason you're seeing each other. You know? And I saw that guy, and I should have been like, I should have walked right up to him in the pool and been like, I got to just tell you, I'm looking at a mirror. Like, I, were you born in New York? Or like, what's going on? Did my mom, you know, like, what do we have? <laughs> Like, did we get split at birth or something? This guy was square. Now, I'm 50 feet away, but every detail looked exactly like me. And I'm like, wow, that is weird. And he was there with his kids. I was with my kids, or with my kid. And that's my doppelganger story, though. That's the only time I ever saw someone. I was like, wow, that's pretty dead on. Like, and I didn't say anything. I'm really pissed to date that I never said anything to that guy just to, uh, to say hello. But maybe one day he'll find my show and be like, oh my goodness, that looks like me on the screen. And then he'll send me that note and be like, you know, I was down in Fort Myers once and I saw a guy, I think it was you. I saw you with your little son and I was there with my kids in the pool. <laughs> I was in like the baby pool. He was in the big pool. And I'm looking at the guy. I'm like, I got to go talk to that guy. My wife's like, go say something. I'm like, nah, I'll see him next year. I'm so pissed. That was like 15 years ago, man. Oh goodness. So this is, Kobe's got a doppelganger in China. So China, where the hell is he? Korea, China. That dude looks a lot like Kobe. I mean, he even got the head. Look at this, the same nog. Same nog, same nose, same lips. Ears are similar ears, actually. Look, this ear's pretty much dead on ear. It's the same ear, unless he had that re-sculpted to look like Kobe's ear. Eyebrows, you see this little thing here that Kobe's got in the top of the eyebrow? He's got it. I'm thinking that there's something to this here. Kobe. Maybe Kobe was banging it out in China. Kobe went to China. Kobe banged it out. Kobe had a Chinese kid. That's it. I figured it out. Uh, you know, sometimes when you become a Scientologist, no, I mean biologist, eh, maybe both. If you're thinking this, you know, Kobe. I don't think Kobe was a Scientologist, though. Just Tom Cruise and Danny Masterson. Let's hope our doppelgangers are cool people. You're right, Green Tea. That's the hope. You want someone who's a, a cool person. You definitely don't want to deal with someone who's a chooch. I actually like RFK Jr., but I'm not sure if I'm going to yet vote. Well, that's interesting, Will. I have to actually say, this is just an outside because you know I don't talk about politics here anymore. I do, I do want to quickly say about that. So you have a guy who has got this, this connection to this country. His father, his uncle... His uncle was John F. Kennedy, okay? So there's like a, people love the Kennedys. That's like a thing. Everybody loves the Kennedys. 
Not saying that there's a reason to, but they've got this American family vibe to them. And the Kennedys were always very much respected, even though their father was a bit, you know, Joe Kennedy was like, basically like, he, he was the one who brought, I think Jameson and, and all whiskey came to America from the Kennedys. They brought all, they were like bootleggers. Uh, but regardless, they moved forward into politics and then they became a, this, this like dynasty here in America. So you got a guy whose father was, was um, Robert F. Kennedy. His, his uncle was the president of the United States. He says he wants to run after, the, I mean, let's be honest. We got a guy who can't speak anymore. And he's, he's in bad shape, such bad shape. He should be in a home right now and they're trying to put him out for four more years and it's mental. He should step aside and say, hey, I got this guy named Robert F. Kennedy who's, who's gonna step up and he's gonna do it, you know? Um, instead, they blackball him. He's got to go in his own third ticket, his third party green party or whatever it is, because his party won't take him. They want the stupid idiot who can't speak anymore and can't read a teleprompter and shuffles around the stage, doesn't know where the stairs are. They want that instead of a guy who actually speaks eloquently. I mean, if you've ever heard him, yeah, he has a hard time speaking. He's got this issue with his voice, but I think it's gotten a little better. But he's extremely bright. He's a lawyer and he's done a lot. People want to push in all this conspiracy stuff, but I mean, there's data that backs up the stuff that he believes. And there's no data to back up the crap that all these other, and it goes back to this thing. When someone points out something wrong in the world, like the fact that from the 1970s to now, the autism rates are stupid. And we went from something like 12 bugaboos to 92 bugaboos. Why do my kids need 92 shots? They don't. And that's why they've got all these issues. And he's just making the simple point. You gotta just look at what happened. We used to get this and now we get this. And now you have all these issues. Autism used to be one in 400. Now it's one in four, whatever the ridiculous, um, you know, it's, it's, the statistics are insane. You can't pretend any longer that nothing, there's no, oh, there's no reason. This is just uh, radio waves. No, this is something much bigger. You know, you got a little child and you're forcing all this crap that you had made in a lab. You know, it's like squirmeme and all this crap. No, I'm sorry. My kid doesn't need that. Putting Henry out of the lax inside my kid, like fuck you. Like I'm, and I'm not an anti-V guy. I'm just an anti-the CV guy because that was bullshit. Don't tell me something works that doesn't work and then pretend that, oh, we never said that. No, I got freaking canceled and sidelined for telling you guys, you're good. You're good, okay? Just stick with God's plan, okay? Wake up and pray, drink some orange juice and tell those fucking assholes to shut their mouths. And instead, the force was really strong that's funny. There was one point my wife said to me, she goes, I think we got to go get it because like I, I'm losing friends. I go, fuck them. I don't need friends like that. I don't need friends that tell me I got to protect their grandma. It's a bunch of horse shit. You know, the funnier thing, I have to tell you this, this is hilarious. The whole time that this went down, I was told I'm the issue because I decided to use my own immunities and, and what God gave me. And I'm told I'm, I'm harmful and that I'm the spread. I never, never got that bullshit but I was the spread. Think about that. Oh, it's the ones that aren't going and following our dictate. Don't tell me that something works. And then when we call you out for it, you cancel me, you cancel us for saying it. And then when it winds up that we were right, you keep us canceled and you just pretend. Oh, Ukraine war. Nobody realizes. The day after the news came out that nope, doesn't work. You could get 900 of them. You're still gonna get Civ. Ukraine war. Just like a day after they couldn't get the former president out on an impeachment, we had CV9. Look it up. I was live. I was live. The one show that's been live every day during this entire insanity. So I was like, one day someone's going to come along. Christine, how are you? So good to see you. One day someone's going to come along and they're going to go through my entire catalog, my show from day one until this day and beyond. And they're going to say, this dude was Mark Stradamus everything I said came true. I'm not saying everything, but everything came true. April 9th, 2020, I created the Dr. Evil episode, which basically said, we have to continue to strike fear into people so they believe that they need it. And when I said that, YouTube said, this guy's a problem. Comedy, satire died that day. When I said as Dr. Weasel Frodge, oh, remember, we all need bugaboos. I had to change the word because I can't say the word with a V anymore. That's the world we live in today. 
I can't say anything about something with a V. I can't say anything that, with, uh, that has to do with the big C. You know, when some people get the big C and they die and they have to get the other thing with a big C, which kills people too. If you talk about that, you get, they take your, your show down. If you say anything about November, that's coming up in November, if you talk about that, they take your show down. If you talk about a certain event that happened in January a few years ago, they take your show down. We're in Cuba. You've got a finger. If you don't like what someone's saying, you could go like this and scroll, but they don't allow that, no. They wanna remove the content and remove your ability to use your common sense and say whether or not what I'm saying is true or not. You can listen to what I'm saying and say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Things are great. I love this guy who's there right now. And I love paying $57,000 for everything instead of, you know, affordably live my life. That's good by me. You know, and yeah, I love when we're being swarmed from our southern border and they say that this is the safest it's been. And I'll believe that. And then we'll say it's because of the last guy that it's, this is going on. And I'll believe that even though the last guy who was in here had us safer than we've ever been. And you wouldn't give him $5 billion to close it off completely. No, no. He was a xenophobe for wanting to do that. But now you want $265 billion to give free houses to those same people that don't deserve to be here. And don't say they don't deserve to be here. They should be here if they come in the right way so we know who they are. But someone who comes across and says, I need to be asylum. No, no, no. Come through the big freaking door over there so you know who you are. What's your name? Oh, Hector. Welcome. Come on in. Okay. My grandfather, when he came here from Portugal... In, in 1956, he's on Ellis Island Wall. You can go see Francisco Pires on the wall at Ellis Island. He could have come through the Southern. He could have come anyway, but he came in the right way. Hey, guys, look, my name is Frank Francisco, but I'm here in America. You can call me Frank. I'm from Portugal. This is my family. I got four kids. This is my wife, Gloria. We're coming to America. Come on in. There's nobody that I know that doesn't say we don't want people in our country. We just need to know who the you are, man. It's that simple. And when you're living in a time where you're called names for saying that, for saying we just need to know who you are, you're welcome here. You're absolutely welcome here. But who are you? Can I ask you that? No, that's racist. You're a xenophobe. You want to close the border? You're a xenophobe. Oh my goodness. Christine, I'm over on YouTube right now. Mark Inspires on X and on Rumble, all under the same name. And yeah, you see over here on the corner of the screen, if you just type in Mark Inspires, you should see us live right now still on YouTube. I'd love to see you in the chat on YouTube because Green Tea's with us. Lori's with us. Will, my brother, and we've got MJ in the house and anybody else that wants to join us on YouTube to just make sure you subscribe, turn on all the notifications. Clapper, you guys too, you're seeing my green screen, but see what the green screen's broadcasting. This is a full green screen show. It's been like this for five, uh, 1200 days I've been doing the green screen show, maybe even more. And there's so much crazy stuff that happens here, but we're sitting with a cool view off into a mountain, like a daily view out to the mountains here. And the news stories are right over my shoulders, which is uh, right over my shoulder, which is a nice thing. Plus, you also get to see Joanne and her wheeze. And you get to hear her wheeze, too, apparently. Joanne. Oh, God almighty. You know, it doesn't get any better. It just gets worse. But uh, so basically, guys, I think I've said enough as far as we... Joanne! You know, sometimes she takes me off the screen. She just wants to be the focus. I get it. All right, now I got to put this back on the phone. Another phone call coming in. Let me move this forward into the song a little bit. Give me two seconds here. We're going to finish up the show in a second. for you guys rumble is our fave yeah head over to christina head over to rumble 
Um, it's hard for me to be able to chat on Rumble, unfortunately, but I am live on Rumble right now as well, and I broadcast every live show goes right to, to Rumble as well. I think we only have about 330, 340 subscribers over there, so if you guys can help me get that uh, to explode. And X, I think those are the two platforms that there's still a chance that my words will be accepted um, and maybe it could grow. Because um, it seems like whatever I'm saying is a problem for them which is unfortunate because I just like to show up here and, and express myself. I feel like that we should be able to express ourselves, you know, and uh, that's not what happens. When they seal the border is not because they care. So true. So true. Lori, she knows it too. <laughs> yeah, Christina, right? Christine, it's like the same thing. I got, um, I was talking about this. When Elon Musk bought X, he let out the big creators, the people that were in the hole, these big creators like, um, uh, what's his name from Tate and all these people who were basically sidelined and Alex Jones, these people got their platforms back. Uh, but all of the other creators who were tipped off by the three letter agencies as a problem, those people are still in the hole. Like no matter what I post on X, no one sees. It's crazy. I got a, one lady who found me and she goes, this guy's been alive for 1900 days in a row. And like, it, why doesn't anybody share his stuff? Like, it's good stuff. Like, why isn't anybody seeing it? Why isn't anybody sharing it? And so every once in a while, I'll see a repost from her and she's like, and then this guy. She'll be like, and then this guy. <laughs> like, it's funny she says it. It's because like, yeah, I'll hit him with something really great, like a piece of comedy or a piece of music. And it's powerful stuff that no one sees. And she's like, what? And then I just, sometimes I'll respond, we're in the twilight zone. What I'd expect is views and hatred if you don't like my content. But to have no views when you're a creator for five years in a row daily, it's because they're afraid of anyone seeing you. They're afraid of anyone connecting with your messaging. And this is why I show up. See that? Christine, this is the first time Christine's seen me. 1,919 days in a row live, long form. You know, Christine, there's a show on day 1,000 in a row. We're getting close to 2,000 days in a row. On day 1,000 in a row, I went live for eight hours and 37 minutes. I was trying to get to 10 hours. I just, I, I couldn't. I ran out of steam. No one, I was on for almost nine hours that day thinking, well, they'll share me with somebody. I was on for four hours. I did nine feature films on this channel where I filmed them live here. The Batmark versus Supermark movie. One of the days I was on for almost six hours while I was filming the scenes for that movie. It, nobody saw it. They've seen the movie. Some people have found that movie, Batmark versus Supermark. It's hilarious. But when I filmed it, there were four people on, five people watching me create this full feature film in front of them. For me, it, I was doing it for the world. Like, you go back and watch any show, I'm broadcasting to the world. Like, I think, I think I'm, I'm in the Truman Show is what I really think. There's been so much content created on this platform in the last five years and no one's seen any of it. And so I'm like, I know I'm creating this content for other viewers. There are people that watch my show every day, just not here on Earth. I'm pretty much entertaining some other planet is what I'm concerned. I, I mean, at this point, for me to be that in the zone daily and write stuff like... This was written last night about a... Don't be I just wrote that song three nights ago, Catch the Wave, maybe a week ago. I wrote Don't Be an April Fool last night. Every night I write at least one song. Now, for the world to not know that, for Christine to just find out that every day of the year I write at least one song live in the moment that sounds like what you just heard. Live looping, I invented a drum here. This drum is the only drum in the world that you could play with your hands and your feet at the same time. You see one of them right here, it's called the Beat Seat. The only drum in the world you could do that. Every other drum makes you bend over, hurt your back. It has one panel, it has one snare, it has just very, very limited. This has four playable panels, two snares, sounds like a full drum kit, and I make full compositions with it every single day of my life. And Christine just found it today for the first time. 
This should piss people off that you've missed 209 songs created on iTunes right here in the moment. Probably over 1,200 songs written since I started this show. They're all here. You just have to go push play on any show, and you'll hear me write or play a piece of music every single day. And I don't have a script. don't know what I'm going to start with, but I'm writing freaking fire. Because when you're in this moment and you're channeling the energy of this universe, you could create the most amazing things. It's the only place where magic exists. It's right here in the second. And every day we, we seem to connect to it. And it's because I refuse to let myself be directed in any capacity. I'm sitting here and I'm letting this moment take me somewhere. And I just start going. And it may deviate here. It may go that way. Whatever my, intuitions, my intuition says creatively in that moment, I'm doing I freaking love that. I could fail at any moment. Love that. But an hour and 26 minutes in, it's been a long one, guys. Uh, yeah, green tea, I gotta go too. Catch the wave. Oh my goodness, that's a good one. I have to release that one too. I gotta get to editing that one. I haven't had a chance to even find it. It's like, that's the other problem is like, I write a song every night, so I can't edit all of these. I'm a realtor. When I finish this show up, I gotta go try to sell some real estate today and find new listings. And so if you happen to be a buyer or a seller of real estate and you need assistance, please keep in mind, I am a realtor. I can help you anywhere in the United States, either find the best agent, or if you're in Connecticut or New York, I could actually work with you personally in order to help you sell or buy a piece of real estate. I've been doing that for 15 years. I've got 13 years of construction experience. Beyond that, my father and brother are builders. And before I got my real estate license, I used to renovate and build homes with them and like project manage. So I kind of think like a builder as a realtor and I can help my clients in many ways, like come up with quotes before we even, or, or ballpark estimates while we're walking through houses instead of waiting for someone like my father to come and tell them what it's going to cost. That saved us so many times in the past. My clients get the house, somebody else is still waiting for that answer. So huge advantages to working with me that I could share with you, including the drone technology I was telling you about earlier. So. If you can, join me. Uh, later on, I'll be back. About 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard. And subscribe, turn on all notifications on YouTube, on X, on Rumble. And Clapper, thank you guys for being here with me as well. Will, my friend, Lori, let me say goodbye to you guys real quick. Don't go anywhere. I'm getting into the chat area here of, where is it? And I also want to hear from you guys. What do you think about Ashton? Is he going to be implicated like they're saying? Do you think he's involved? Is there more to this than we know? I'm curious what you think. Here we go. I got DM Ryan, my brother with a beat seat. Guys, this is someone who believes in the music and had bought his own beat seat so he could jam along with me when we were doing these, these jams every day. Green Tea, Lori, MJ in the house, and Will. We gotta talk more about what we were talking about earlier, Will. They should give this guy a shot. He's a great option, much better than their current option. That guy should be going to a sleep sofa, because that's what he is. Um, until later. Uh, they are all, yes, that's true, Christine. Christine, the one thing I'd say is hit YouTube up because there's 3,500 pieces of content and the Donald Trump show, which you need to see. You're gonna love it. It's a full feature film, four hours plus, of roasting sleep sofa Joe Biden. And it has Donald J. Trump up winning big league. So check it out. Head over to YouTube for that. I love you guys. I will see you later. You got